Yo, yo, what's going on everybody? This is Retrospective Dave, back at you again with another video. I hope this video finds you well and in good spirits. And the wait is over, folks. We finally have the Air Jordan Flint 13 2020. This is the best Air Jordan release, in my opinion, of 2020. Uh, classic colorway, classic silhouette, definitely a grail in many people's eyes, including myself, and arguably the best Air Jordan 13 colorway of all the OGs. So y'all let me know in the comment section what you think is the best 13, but this one is definitely the one for me. Um, we last saw this release in 2010, before that 2005, and originally in 1998. I had both the 1998 and the 2005 version. I was very disappointed in the 2010 version because it didn't have the 3M material, and that's actually what caught my attention when I was 8 years old, begging my mom to buy me this shoe, and she finally got it for my birthday. So I was super stoked to have it back then, and I'm definitely stoked to have it now. Uh, this shoe is available everywhere May 30th, 2020 for $190. So I hope everybody that's going out to get this for retail, I hope you get what you want. I hope you get your size. Um, if not, hopefully they'll be doing a bunch of restocks on these like they've been doing everything else. And if not, and you have to go to StockX, go Poshmark, consignment stores and all of that, um, hopefully this video will be of some use to you because I will be going over all of the details of the shoe. I'm not an expert, but I'm going to definitely do my best to help you authenticate your shoes to the best of my ability. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the shoe. Yo, right before I get into the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my homie T for helping me secure this pair during the last dance finale shock drop. Um, he's always looking out for me when he can. And this video would not be possible this early if it weren't for him. So huge shout out to T. And make sure you all show your appreciation to him by giving him a follow on Instagram at sneakerheads43. So if you've been following me for a little while, then you already know that I like to talk about the boxes before I get into the shoes. So on the left, I have my Flint 13s. On the right, I have my Court Purple 13s. And I want to show you something with these boxes. If you, when you order your Flint 13s offline, you shouldn't have anything inside of the box. And I mean literally nothing inside of the box except for the size dimensions of the box. There's no QR code. There's no stamp. No stamps on the box lid. And if you look at the Court Purple 13 box, it's the same exact thing so i guess with 13s they don't put anything inside of the boxes as you can see here nothing uh this is just my receipt for Foot Locker. jerry bus patch rest in peace jerry bus real laker fans know what this is about rest in peace jerry bus but yeah that's it there's nothing inside of the boxes so if you order your flint 13s and you have the gold quality control stamp or the green and white quality control stamp or if you have a serial number stamped on your box you know then that might be a red flag because neither of these 13 boxes have anything inside of them all right here's a quick look at the box label so for the color description you have navy university blue uh style code is 414-571-404 and as far as the box label the text on here is a little debossed very subtle it's kind of like all the other Jordans that have come out recently. Um, on this particular box label, though, I don't feel it as much. It's very subtle, like I said. Um, so you'll definitely feel it more on this barcode area. So if you take your thumb or your finger and you rub it across the lines on the barcode, you will definitely feel that they're in, uh, debossed a little bit. Um, this is for a size 12, so your barcode numbers should be the same for a size 12. If you wear anything other than a 12, you will still have the same numbers here up until the the 641 part so the 641 should be different if you have anything other than the size 12 but for the most part all of the other numbers should be the same all right this is the back side of the box so up here you have some uh nike information this is not a stamp by the way this is not a sticker this is all a part of the box it's flat um you also have your recycling symbol down at the bottom nothing else on this side and that's it all right, so when it comes to the shoe paper itself, it's going to have two different textures. One side is going to be uh, like a waxed texture, and then the other side is going to be very dry. Like, just it's going to feel just like regular paper pretty much. So one side is waxed, the other side is dry. All right, the first thing I want to touch on is the sock liner. Um, so I know everyone has different eyes. Everyone has different optics. So you may not be able to tell the difference on camera, but if you have these shoes in person, in hand and you would definitely be able to tell the difference between the shades of blue on the uh, mesh area where the 3m is and the uh, sock liner itself so the sock liner is a little bit more washed out than the blue on the side here this is a little bit more it's a little bit darker on the side panels and even on the border right here 
than it is on the sock liner so when you order your shoes um, just take a good look at it the sock liner is definitely a different shade of blue um, on some of the fake versions that I've seen the the sock liner and the mesh area are actually the same sh same shade of blue so on the real pairs like I said just keep in mind that this part here the sock liner is a little bit more faded uh, than the uh, side panels all right folks moving on to the hologram um, if you pay attention to the plastic that's on the hologram is actually cut perfectly almost to the circle or the uh, shape of the hologram um, it's not going outside of the circle at all but it's just cut real close to the uh, shape of the hologram itself so if you order your shoes and your plastic is going over this circle red flag um, it's also like that on the grade school sizes I did see one grade school size um, where this plastic was actually cut to the circle itself so keep that in mind all right, so next I want to direct your attention to the Jordan tab near the toe box. Um, I found this to be very deliberate on Jordan Brand's part because it's like this on the other shoe as well. But if you look at some of the letters, they actually have threading that's missing. Whereas the A and the N is pretty much filled in. So if you look at the J, on the bottom half of the J, uh, it's got some threading that's missing here. If you look at the O, the top half of the O, missing threading. Bottom half, same thing. The top of the R... It's missing some threading there and then the top of the D and on the bottom of the D is the same thing so the O and the D kind of have the same uh, layout in terms of like the missing threading on the top and the bottom and then as you can see the A and the N are pretty much filled in and like I said this is very deliberate because if you look at the other shoe it pretty much has the same design for the most part all right, so I tried to make this image as sharp as I could. So um, I hope you're able to see this, but on Jordan's hand right here on the Jumpman, you should be able to make out that he has four fingers, uh, like one long continuous stitch from the pinky to the thumb. Uh, that, that's one continuous stitch there. So you have the pinky here, the thumb there, and then you have the two fingers in the middle. Uh, those should be shorter than the uh, pinky in the thumb area. So uh, like the one, two, three four like I said if, if you can't make this out on camera when you have the shoes in hand you should be able to tell that he has four fingers so again like just one long continuous stitch from the pinky to the thumb and then you have the two small fingers in the middle this is pretty much the same jump man that's on the fire red fives if you own those obviously the uh, jump man on the fire red five is a bit bigger because it's on a bigger tongue um, it's more bold so on this one it's a smaller font but uh, you should be able to make that out all right, so when it comes to the leather, I try not to touch on it too much because it's not that big of a deal. Um, because even on auth authentic pairs, the leather can vary a little bit depending on uh, you know how it was treated in the factory. So some pairs may be more tumbled than others. Um, I'll just put that out there. Um, but this is what the tumbled leather looks like, uh, just for the sake of the video, just in case you were curious. Um, I'm gonna turn, try to turn the exposure down just a little bit so you can see the details in the leather. So this is pretty much what you're gonna see all the way down to the uh, toe box area. Um, like I said, some pairs may be a little bit more tumbled or less tumbled. Um, so this is not really something that I would say is like a huge giveaway in terms of, uh, oh, this shoe is real or this shoe is fake. But essentially this is what the shoe, as far as the uh, tumble leather, this is what it should look like. All right, so moving on to the 3M panel, um, I just want you to pay attention to the uh, pattern of the stitching. So the stitching going around the shoe, like this part here going around the shoe, you're going to have three rows of stitching. So it's, it's triple stitched. Um, you're going to have like one row of stitching here, another one here, and then another one here. So it's like three stitches going all the way around, and it's pretty much going to follow that pattern all the way around until it gets to this top part here and when it gets up here it's going to turn into a single stitch like right along in this area let me see if it can get it to focus better so it's going to turn into a single stitch right in this area and then as it makes its way back to this part then it's going to turn into that triple stitch again like i said you may not be able to see the triple stitching that clear on the camera um but in hand you'll definitely see it so like like there's one row of stitching another one and then the third one is 
closer to the border but it's, so it's going to follow that triple stitch all the way around all the way around up until it gets to this top half where the lace hole is and then it's going to go into a single stitch all right so on the bottom of the shoe where the paw prints are quote unquote um i want to point this out this is actually somewhat weird it's going to sound weird saying this but the paw prints especially like in these little uh crevices here not here but just like around this area you're going to see some inconsistencies um it almost looks like jordan brand tried to use some type of paint where's my pointer like right in here it looks like they tried to use paint to kind of fill in these little spots so like right here it has gray uh there's like some black here you know and even down here you can see like the inconsistencies here and in this section as well so on the real pairs and it's like that on the other shoe as well so on the real ones it's going to look kind of sloppy around the paw print area like like in this section um I saw a video of a fake pair and they actually filled in all of those little areas uh, with either gray or black. So on the fake pairs, they actually look perfect versus the real pairs that they actually look a little bit more, uh, they just look sloppy. Um, so like I said, it's strange because you would think it'd be the other way around, but um, that's also something that I think is telling. All right, so here's a quick look at my tongue tab. Um, I don't have really much to say about the tongue tab itself because I don't have a fake pair next to me to compare. Um, some of the videos that I've seen on the fake pairs, they don't really show the tongue tab like that. So it's hard to say what's different on this one versus that one. But uh, as far as the production dates, those are always going to vary from pair to pair. Um, simply, you know, because every shoe isn't made on the same day at the same time and all of that. So you're going to have different production dates. Uh, mine are November 20th to... March 13th but um yeah here's just a quick look just for you to compare for yourself all right so here's a quick look at the shoe tree it's kind of skinny at the top it gets wider at the bottom this is for a size 12 to a 12 and a half the jump man right there so if you look at it the part that's more flared out on this side if you flip that over you will see molded sock liner um, I think the court purples and the fire red fives those said uh, those red uh, die cut sock liner so on the flint 13s you're gonna have molded sock liner all right here's a shot of the insole it's pretty much navy blue uh, Carolina blue Jumpman uh, the Jumpman is actually debossed into the insole meaning that it's pressed down into the insole a bit so there's some depth in here um, you can see and it's painted on so it's not like the court purples where you know that uh, Nike branding was kind of just placed on top of the insole and you know like you wear it one time then the nike logo is coming right off uh this seems to be done with a little bit uh better quality you know the uh, jumpman is actually painted on and it's debossed so you can wear these about five six seven times and i don't think that jumpman is going anywhere like that unless you're playing basketball in them um i don't think that jumpman is going anywhere so uh that's what the insole looks like and here's what you will see when the insole is flipped over you have this uh, Dura Pontex. You have the trademark over here. Um, this is what size 12? I guess this is. Well, it says 12T to 13. So I don't know if that's for size 12 to 13. Um, your insoles may be different depending on what size you wear, but the branding is Dura Pontex. It's the same on the other shoe. I mean, on the other insole as well. Um, so this is what the other half or the bottom half of the insole looks like. All right, and for those of you that wanna know, this is what the inside of the shoe looks like when you take the insoles out. Uh, this number all the way over here to the right of the screen, I don't know if that's a 12 or a 15. Um, I'm gonna assume it's a 12 because my shoe is a size 12. But, so there's like a netting that's covering, that's sitting on top of all of the threading there. So, you know, usually when you have your Jordans, they're like a, that, uh, the threading is pretty much taped down this is like a netting on top of that so uh you may have different numbers in your shoe depending on the size so if you wear like a nine you might have a nine in there i'm not sure uh let me know down in the comment section what your shoe looks like if you wear anything other than a size 12 but this is what the inside of the shoe looks like so this is something new that i'm getting ready to try out um shout out to one of my subscribers richie ortega for suggesting that i do a black light test so 
here we go. This is the black light. And the only thing that I'm really getting with the black light are the shoelaces. Um, around the toe cap, I'm getting a little bit of glue stains here and there. Uh, even like around the little pods on the side of the shoe, but and some of the threading like on the outline of the mesh is lighting up a little bit as well um, not every single thread but some of them but for the most part all I'm getting are the shoelaces I don't see anything else really the only thing like on the hologram um, that's lighting up a little bit like it looks foggy um, if you've had 13s for more than 10 years like 10 years plus and they get old and uh, that hologram kind of starts to get cloudy that's what it looks like when you shine a black light on it um, but like I said for the most part I'm shining the shoe and all I'm really getting are the shoelaces and some glue stains here and there around the toe box area and a little bit of an outline on the mesh part all right folks and that will conclude today's video on the 2020 Flint 13s this is a guided laces episode so um if you feel like I left out anything or should have touched on something in the video, please let me know down in the comment section. Uh, usually when I don't touch on something or talk about a particular part of the shoe, it's usually because I feel like it's not that important or it may be too hard to tell whether I touch on it or not. It may be too hard for you to authenticate your shoes either way. Um, so sometimes I might leave something out, but you might find something that I left out to be important and uh, have a different perspective on it. So. Make sure you leave your uh, thoughts in the comment section. Uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you so much to all of you that have been super supportive of the channel, um, who have been writing me on Instagram, you know, letting me know that my channel has actually helped you authenticate your shoes or gave you a little bit of peace of mind. So I am available on Instagram if you do want to reach out to me um, outside of YouTube. If you have any questions, I am easy to reach um, and I will help you to the best of my ability. Until next time, y'all stay fresh, blessed, and free of stress, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.